Eduard, thank you so much for joining me today at Risk Minds HQ. Um, tell me, um, as we're heading into uh, the last bit of the year, um, with Risk Minds International coming up, what are you most excited to talk about at the event? Um, well, thanks for inviting me, Lily. Um, I think probably the good old topic, Basel III, has been in the works, I think, over 13 years, and it's finally happening, and that is not. So that, I think, is why I think it's still going to be very topical. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Exchanging notes with um, ex-colleagues, friends, and, and regulators, hopefully, as well. And, of course, last year, we um, under the Global Risk Regulation Summit, we talked about um, the Basel Endgame a lot. Um, and what are you expecting uh, coming down at the end, by the end of the year? I think the Endgame is a very long Endgame. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think last year the, the U.S. had issued the NPR. So as I understand, they're going to reissue, yet revise NPR. So we're all looking forward to that. Also, in the meantime, the U.S., sorry, the U.K. finalized their rules as well. But another key topic is not just uh, the rules, but the timing. So we already have the delay from the European Union. Uh, probably we all expect U.K. to follow through with the delayed by another year and, and the U.S. as well because they're still deliberating. So as a global head of risk methodology, is the kind of holistic picture coming together for you? Uh, actually, I'm in an interesting position as global head of methodology at Nomura because we're one of the few firms uh, that are planning to adopt IMA, that's for internal model for market risk. And as of now, we're still in the timeline of March 2025 for go live. We, we are in a March to March calendar year, uh, financial year. Um, so, yeah, so so in a way we, we're kind of, at the moment, uh, one of the earlier adopters uh, and most likely the, the first adopt, potential adopter of internal models for market risk. Um, and I know um, outside of this conversation, you mentioned the uh, reduction of the adoption of internal models for market risk. Mm -hmm. What is that trend and um, why is it so important in the in light of Basel III? Yeah, I, I have a particular interest in that um, because certainly in the more we, we were uh, full adopters of internal models across the board. Um, we is uh, is the in Ernst and conducted a recent survey and they issued a white paper on this very topic where i think out of uh about what about 25 firms uh the original adopters of ima then it's now gone down to 10. and even when you think about 10 of which we are one of them these are still kind of probably planned to implement so you never quite know so that's already a huge reduction um i'm not sure if the regulators work expecting that, that huge drop. And on top of that, it's a reduced uh, uh, scope as well, because even when you adopt, uh, there's a minimum requirement of coverage and many firms will be going for uh, much less than 50% coverage. So it's quite a massive change. And I think from my personal view is, it'd be the first time in a long time where we take almost a step backwards in terms of sophistication. Um, and I understand that from the regulatory perspective, better standardized model, which is what's been rolled out, is better than the old standardized model. But if you're originally an internal models firm, going back to a, a better standardized, it is a step backwards in my view. And I think we we haven't yet uncovered the cons the consequences of that. And I think it's it, it could be serious because you now be having to manage perhaps uh, scarce resources in terms of RWA on the, what would be a common model that is not owned by us, as the, the regulators define it. You know, it's a better standardized model, but it's still, it is always going to have limitations by design. Uh, so that, that it does worry me. And I think, like I said, I don't think it was the original intention that there would be such a big drop. And that was certainly the topic of I think, the the white paper that was issued by ISDA and Ernst & Young. Yes, and that sounds like a big, uh, going to mean to be a big topic of conversation at Risk Minds International, certainly, if it has uh, big consequences uh, for, for large firms such as yourself. 
Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, Levy. Pleasure.